So we are, are going to sit. Okay. So Paul, this is a present for you. Okay, awesome. Now we're starting. <laughs> okay, the party's beginning, boys and yeah, girls. Yeah, now it's you know, time no. to drink, right? It's Suntory time. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> So what are we going to talk about? I don't know. So what are we going to talk? Well, I mean, we're talking about, I guess, the topic is starting companies. Yeah. So you started a few of them, right? I'm kind of out of practice. I haven't started a company for seven years, right? Uh -huh. So tell me what goes in your head when you want to start a company. I mean, you just launched oh. a new one even recently, right? Okay. So before that, maybe uh, some people don't know me. So okay, just, yeah, make introductions. Know, quick, yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, quick yeah great. introduction. So I just press this, right? Uh, so I'm a founder and CEO of the Gumi. Gumi is making the mobile games. And now uh, we have an office all around the world, and we have 700 employees. And then also, you know, we have many games. And then also, we have Gumi Ventures. So this venture fund is, you know, 20 million fund. And then maybe I think, so, you know, today we are going to talk about CDL Entrepreneur or, you know, how to make new companies, right? Yeah. So uh, the company on the left top, Candy, that company is, you know, I found it, you know, yeah, yeah besides Gumi. And then Candy is, you know, making the live streaming and commerce. And then now growing very fast and already fundraised 60 million. And then another portfolio is also unique. Three minutes is, you know, uh, Instagrammer and then live commerce. And then they just acquired by Gree about uh, 43 million. And then also Delhi, uh, the company making the, like Tasty. Yeah, yeah. but you know, uh, focusing on the uh, mobile applications. And then they just, you know, found that it's 30 million. Okay. Good, huh? And then now we also, you know, put the effort onto the VR. So we do incubation in Tokyo VR startup and so VR startup. And then also we have a fund in the States, Venture Reality Fund. And then, yeah, Presence Capital, it's, you know, his fund. We also LP of Presence Capital. And then internal development. So for the BL and the AL is, you know, now kind of we are collaborating together, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's, you know, for us. And so Paul, could you introduce yourself to yes, everybody? Yes, of course. Um, so, um, I myself actually have started three companies as well. Um, I started three of those companies in Silicon Valley and kind of globally. Um, I sold my last company in 2010, and then I made the shift to become an investor. Um, I started just slowly by doing small investments out of my personal money in Silicon Valley. Um, that has gone really quite well for us. I've done over 50 investments um, yeah, in a lot of very young companies um, in the United States. Um, I ended up falling in love with investing and I started going out there and wanting to invest in other parts of the world. So in the last six years, I've been going out there and actually kind of as a serial entrepreneur almost launching a bunch of different venture capital funds uh, <laughs> all around the world. So um, having you know, just one fund in the United States has now expanded to where I have six different funds on four different continents. Um, and so I have a fund that, you know, here I have one in the United States, one in Southeast Asia, one in Sub-Saharan Africa, one in the Nordics, kind of, you know, the home place of slush. And then I have one that does video games, and then the one we're working together on, Presence Capital, does virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, together in my portfolio of, of companies, you know, via all these funds, I have over 220 companies, and growing, I'd say we probably do an investment, maybe one every single week, maybe even more. That's very really unique, right? So I, I think I'm the only person doing this, yeah. Yeah, so nowadays, many people, many entrepreneurs, like, you know, become serial entrepreneur, right? But I never heard, like, you know, serial, like, you know, uh, BC investors, and then doing at the same time, right? Yeah, I think, I mean, the model's pretty new. There are a few people that are launching funds around the world. I mean, one of our friends, Dave, was up here a little bit earlier with 500 startups. Um, there's somebody doing it, Founders Institute, launching a lot of micro funds. Mm -hmm. Tim Draper, DFJ, has done it in the past, but it's a pretty new model, and really not many people have done it before. So, yeah, I'm taking the serial entrepreneur-like mindset and applying to venture capital of sorts, so, yeah. So. What do you think? Who is our audience? They are the entrepreneurs or VC or student? I'm guessing, I'm hoping mostly entrepreneurs. I'm guessing 60, hey, 70 percent. Hey, so who is an entrepreneur? entrepreneur? Who is entrepreneur? And who is entrepreneur making the profit? 
Oh no, not that many. Nobody. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. No, okay. nobody making the profit. How about venture capitalists? How many investors do we have? Oh wow. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So most people here are looking. Who wants to start a company who has not started a company yet? Okay. So this is a lot ah. of people are looking to take the leap. Mm. Okay. Now we know our audience. This is yeah. cool, right? So, so maybe, maybe this would be a good question. There's a lot of you know future entrepreneurs here. When did you start your first company, and like, what made you start? Like, what made you jump and kind of begin, you know, starting a company? Oh yeah. So I'm now uh, 43, and then after I graduate uh, high schools, I just you know 10 years traveled whole around the world. Yeah. yeah. After like you know 1995, I moved into the Shanghai, and then I went to the schools yeah. for years. And then after that, I was a backpacker. Yeah. And then I tried, yeah, we are backpacker background, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I backpacking, like, you know, from China and like Tibet, India, and Southeast Asia, and from North, U North America and yeah. Central and uh, uh, South America. Yeah. That takes, you know, two years. And then after moving to the Los Angeles, yeah, that, yeah. they stayed there, you know, four years. And then when I was 29, came back to Japan and start to work. Yeah. So when you came back to Japan, you had 10 years of traveling, you had a lot of fun, but was there something that said, fuck it, I want to start a company now? Was it an idea or was it some people you wanted to work with? What was the beginning that made you start? Because it's, it's kind of scary to start a company, right? Yeah, but you know, you know, I was, I was just, you know, traveling and studying, you know, like uh, until, you know, 29, right? Yeah, yeah. So have to work. <laughs> Maybe. And so what, did nobody want to hire you? And you're like, I'm unemployable, I have to start my own company? Is that what happened pretty much? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think, you know, uh, nowadays, you know, maybe Japan and Finland is, you know, very similar. Yeah. Young people is, you know, looking for the life, right? So used to, used to in Japan, like, you know, young people, uh, like, you know, uh, study hard and then go to that good, you know, uh, junior high school, high school, and go to you know good universities, and then go to, like you know, big company. This is a life, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, this life is you know sucks, right? I mean, for me, yes. I think you know, going kind of following somebody else's path is not the best way, right? What's really cool about being an entrepreneur is you get to create your own path, right? If you want to go out there and start a company in the middle of Africa, you can. You want to start the company in your hometown and create jobs, you can. I think that's the power of being an entrepreneur is you control your own destiny in some way. Of course, there's outside factors, but you, at the end of the day, are the one that chooses your path, right? Yeah. Oh, so maybe many students is here, right? Yeah, yeah, so. Hey, so who is a student? Okay, we got a lot of students. Okay, okay good. Okay, so who want to uh, join the big companies like Toshiba? <laughs> one, we have one. Okay, right? This is good. This is good. Okay, so the attitude is changing, right? So let me, so there's a lot of students here, and a lot of them seem like you guys want to start companies. Uh, let me give you one piece of advice that I think is really important. I, I, I tell it to a lot of people when they're thinking about starting a company, right? So, the worst thing that happens if you start a company is that you get a better job, right? So let's say you're working at a big company or you never even had a company before, you never even had a job. If you go out there and start a company and you work on it for six months, a year, two years, and you fail and you get a zero, you know, don't sell the company, you still will become so much more employable, right? Like, I know for me, when I was hiring people in my company, I was always looking for people that had a very entrepreneurial attitude, people that actually would do things without being told, people that took it upon themselves to go out there and create value, right? So if you are in the audience thinking about starting a company, I'd say fuck it and just do it. There is no downside, there's only upside. The worst thing that happens, as I said, is you get a better job. That sounds like a pretty good option, right? Yeah, so, uh, so you are the investor from you know Silicon Valley, right? Yeah. So maybe you know many people want to know how can they get money from you know US investors? Yeah. So so what is your criteria to invest yeah. to the company? Where you see? Yeah, I mean so the best way obviously is like you have to show up, right? So the first thing you have to do to get money is you have to start asking, right? And I say you have to start asking a lot of people, right? You can't just go talk to one investor, two investors. You should go out there and try as many contacts as possible, right? And the, how you do that is you ask your friends, you go to a conference, you make connections, and always ask people, help me out. Can you connect me to somebody else, right? Oh, uh, so, yeah. so, so how can they connect to you guys? Yeah. I like mean, so I think the same thing for you, right? How do they get to people like us, right? I mean. 
Uh, the best strategy is not to go out there and just run to somebody at a conference, right? The best way, if you can, is find a connection, right? We have amazing tools, right? We have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, we have other social networks. You could go find out how we're connected, right? Hey, so, so, so if you know here, have you know student yeah. want to get the invest from you? Just you know, using the Twitter or you know LinkedIn, and just mail you, and yeah. you can respond. I mean, uh, this actually works. A lot of times, if they find a way. And so, do you respond? Just uh, you know, young students. I read you know. every single one, and sometimes I do, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if you guys go out there and show like a quick story, I will, and I get excited. I might respond, right? Another way to increase your chance of a response is find somebody that I know, right? So maybe another entrepreneur I invested into or another friend of mine that I've worked with in the past. If you can find a connection to him and get a recommendation, then I will for sure to take the meeting, especially if it's from a very close friend. Like for instance, if you sent me a company tomorrow, yeah. I would take the meeting. I mean, because I respect you as a person, I would take the meeting. So the same thing works for all my other friends, my former employees, or even my portfolio. I said I have 220 companies and every company is one or two founders, maybe three. So there's like five or six hundred people in this world that if you find them, you could then connect to me, right? So this is actually a way of getting in yeah. touch. Yeah, that's, I also, you know, understand. So if, you know, you guys want to start the companies and you guys want to get the invest, introduction, introduce it, you know, so important, right? So let me ask so, a question. How about yourself? Do you take meetings? Oh, I mean, you're a very famous entrepreneur here in Japan, and there's a lot of you know Japanese or future Japanese entrepreneurs. How do they get in touch with you? Same thing or, or different? Oh, or so are you hard to reach? Yeah. So 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 for me, it's you know very simple. So many young people, uh, you know, I have a meeting with them, right? So the best best part is we using the Twitter or you know Instagram or like you know Facebook, right? And then some people always, you know, do the nice to me and, you know, good comment to me. And then if, you know, keep continuing, like, you know, one month, two months, then I feel nice, right? It's a relationship. I mean, you're getting the, you see they're following, they're respecting you. And yeah. you want to give them time as well, right? Yeah. So, you know, my, ad my advice is, you know, if you guys want to get, you know, investment from investor or like, you know, city entrepreneurs, just, you know, find their Twitter or you know Facebook or Instagram and then every day what he say just you know nice and also sometimes you know comment oh that's good idea that's nice or oh, that's beautiful then keep continue one month then I feel hmm hmm yeah, he's nice so, so <laughs> this is important feed right? his ego <laughs> right, right? Like, make him feel good and he'll then but this is true, actually, right? Um, this actually brings a, a little bit higher level point, right? If you bring value to an investor or you bring some kind of nice feeling or like some cool introduction, then we actually will be way more incentivized to want to help you out, right? So don't always come into a meeting saying, give me, give me, give me. You should always try to give first and then sometimes you get amazing things in return, right? I know when I was beginning my career, I would always try to help other people out, make introductions, make connections, you know, give them time, you know, help think about their problem. And then I wouldn't ask for anything, but then maybe five years, ten years later, I would get something in return. So always help people out. And people remember, this person's a good person. This person's giving me a lot of their time. I want to help them out too. Because you always want to help out good people. You don't want to help yeah. out shitty people, right? So Right, 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 right. So maybe, you know, important thing is, you know, uh, Joining the good community is, you know, very important, right? Yeah, this is so, true. So what do you think? How young people, they don't have any communities. How can they get, you know... Well, they have the a community right here. Everybody here is connected to startups, right? You're not going to some, like, you know, conference for, I don't know, for, like, automotive, you know, construction type of stuff, right? But, like, you guys are all here. You're all interested. So what I would say is turn to the person next to you. Say hi, be friendly, right? You know, later it's gonna be a party. Talk to each other, right? This is how the community starts. I know for me, like when I was starting my career, um, being a CEO and founder is very lonely sometimes, right? So what I would do is actually, I would host dinners all the time. I would email other founders and say, hey guys, you wanna go grab a beer or you wanna go out to a dinner? It doesn't have to be expensive. It could be some cheap ramen. It could be even McDonald's. It doesn't matter, but go out there, meet each other, and you eyes all grow up. What's really cool is as you get older, your friends become yeah. more important. Like we are all losers. Like when, when I started my first company, I was nobody. My friends were all nobodies, but now my friends are some really impressive people. You're like, holy shit, I knew you when you sucked, yeah. right? So it's key thing is for you guys to meet each other and you guys will all grow together and help each other out. It's very, very important, so. Yeah, so uh, when I start my companies, uh, so, uh, 
29, I come back to Japan, and you know, my previous companies, you know, uh, movie and TV production companies. My friend is a founder and CEO, and then I'm a co-founder. And then I did, you know, four years, and then after that, I decided, you know, start own companies, right? So until that, you know, I don't have any connection to the internet industries, but uh, that time, uh, I can read, you know, English, and I really like, you know, internet and new technology, right? So always, you know, I just, you know, check in, like, you know, VentureBeat or, you know, TechCrunch, and I just, you know, uh, write in the blogs. Like, you know, uh, maybe many people doesn't know, but, you know, 10 or, you know, 12 years ago, I was very famous blogger, tech blogger in Japan. And then that time, you know, many, uh, not many, but, you know, some people, some entrepreneurs, you know, writing the blog, tech blog. And then many, many of them is, you know, what they're writing is just, you know, post about the kids or, you know, dogs or cat, right? And the food. So only few people, few like CEO, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, writing real tech blog, right? So among those people become like, you know, friends. So, so my first, you know, connection to the internet companies is, uh, uh, do you know Merukari? Yes, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah course, Merukari yeah. is, you know, uh, only one, you know, Japanese unicorn, right? Yes, yeah. So founder and CEO of the Merukari is, you know, Shintaro. Yeah. And then Shintaro is, you know, also the blogger, yeah. famous bloggers. And then I read, you know, his blog, and then he read my blog. And we just, you know, I forgot, you know, who sent the message first, but like, oh, I reading your blog, yeah, I like your blog. Yeah. Then, you know, we have a dinner, right? Yeah. And then also, you know, we get, you know, close together. So Gumi is, you know, founded. I spend like, you know, 80%. Uh, so, I spend uh, 80K. And then my previous company is, you know, spend uh, 10K. And then uh, Sintaro is spend 5K. And then Sintaro's, you know, company, previous company called Uno, spent, you know, invest, you know, five Ks, yep. and then we start together. And then he, that time, 15 years ago, his company, Uno, they are running copycat of the Flickr. That doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, you change, right? You adapt, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah. So that time, you know, we get, you know, know each other and, you know, but, you know, he have, you know, good connection to the internet industries and then he introduced me, you know, many, like, you know, good connections. Then after that, you know, I also, you know, have many This friends. brings up a very good point, actually. So if you start being like successful, don't forget your friends, right? Yeah. So when you're working together and you all suck in the beginning, we all suck in the beginning, right? Um, but if one of your friends or you start doing good, don't forget about your friends. Help them out, right? Yeah. Make connections for them. Help them with investors. Help their, with their deck. Like, this is very important, right? This is actually how the community works. So one thing that's very great about Silicon Valley, and it started to happen here in Japan, is like people help each other out. Like I know when I first came to Silicon Valley, I didn't know anything, right? But some of the guys who were older, they were nice to me, right? So I remembered, oh, they were so nice to me. I should go out there and help. And that's actually why I do all these investments around the world. Uh -huh. I want to help and connect too because people were so nice to me. So don't forget who you were part of, right? And help each other out. That's actually how the Japanese or just the Texas ecosystem grows mm -hmm. together even faster. So Yeah, so this is so-called ecosystem, right? I guess it's an ecosystem, of course, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, so you're, you know, you kind of have all your friends you're working together with, right? And so you're doing a lot of investments. So when you're investing, what are you looking for? Are you looking to help people out as well too? Or are you only looking for financial gain? Like what makes you interested in helping people out? Oh, for that is, first of all, uh, I look for the market. Yeah. So I think, you know, team is of course important, but you know, market is, you know, way more important than the team, right? So, uh, so I only invest, you know, that, area that I know, I understand. So like, you know, uh, like Gumi Venture is, you know, only, only invested to the mobile video. Yeah. And then now, you know, our fund is, you know, invested to the VR and the AR, right? Yeah. So first, you know, I decided to the market and then team. Yeah. Mm. So let me ask you, I mean, obviously we're both very interested in VR, AR. What got you excited about it? What made you start wanting to invest so much into the space? Oh, so, 
So I think so, you know, all of you guys is, you know, if you know you guys want to make the companies, be our air in the place. That's because, like you know, from 2007, like uh, smartphones start, right? And then already spent, you know, 10 years. And people think, you know, smartphone is very convenient. Yeah. But no, right? Yeah. Always, you know, like this. But you know, in the future, it's, you know, VR and the AR and the MR, right? Yeah. So our eyes is, you know, connected to the internet. And then we do the internet in here, right? So this is the futures. So I think uh, if, you know, we can go back to 2007, what are we going to do? That's simple, right? We do something related to the smartphone, right? And then what we're going to do is smartphone first, smartphone only, right? So now device is going to be changed. So this is, you know, very good timing to, you know, start. No, I mean, we have the same thesis, right? Whenever there's a new platform, there's many big companies that come out of that platform, right? So whenever things change, if you're there at the beginning of the change, you have a very high chance of becoming a huge company. If you now are, let's say just today, you want to start building a mobile company or mobile game company, whatever, you'd be in deep shit, right? But if you go out there when a platform's being created, there's a huge opportunity, right? Yeah. Yeah, so another thing that was very important for me is that I was seeing actually a lot of my smart friends were getting really excited about the platform, right? When I see really smart people getting excited in the kind of very geeky kind of engineering level, I think that the consumers will come a little bit later too, right? Yeah. So it shows that this is gonna be an exciting place to be and there's gonna be really cool big opportunities and hopefully you talk to one of us too and <laughs> we can be part of your story as well too, right? So Yeah, so I think so, you know, now, but you know, uh, for the Japanese, like, you know, startup scene is, you know, going to be very uh, developed. Like, you know, when I start Gumi, it's 2007. That time, in Japan, only six angel investor. Only six angel investors? Yeah, when well, I started changed the a lot, right? Yeah. yeah, and then that time, uh, fundraising one million is a Whoa, big deal. deal. Yeah, holy cow, right? Yeah. yeah, right. But, you know, now it's, you know, 10 million, it's, you know, not that difficult, right? And the angel investor, there is so many angel investors is there, right? So what you're saying, it's a great time now to be a, a startup entrepreneur. There's it is. a lot more money. There's more opportunities. There's guys like this who you could learn from, right? Guys like me, I come in a couple times a year. You hopefully we could teach you something, right? Yeah. And we are here to offer ourselves as well too. So. Yeah. So so you know, if you know you guys want to start a company, best way is you know every day is uh, put you know nice in it to my <laughs> yeah. Facebook account, and then I will be happy. And then I can talk and you know, I introduce you. Sure, give me lots of likes as well too. I want, I want my ego to be pumped up as well. But no, but seriously, like, come approach people like us. Don't be shy. Talk to each other and you know, you could do some amazing things together. That's what's really cool. People are powerful. We could do it together, right? Awesome. Hey. I think we're done. Thank you guys. Thank you. Cheers, baby. <laughs>